everybody this is Jen welcome to my channel we just got a massive rainstorm here just a little bit ago and things look a lot different so I figured I'd take you out to the garden and just show you what's going on out there and how much it's really perked up since we've had the rainstorm come through that's today right here on Garden Jen's Journey Okay, I don't know if the camera can pick up. There we go. See that? There that is the back edge of the storm that had just rolled through. The sun has finally come out and it has stopped raining. So I'm going to take you and show you what's gone on since then. So this is our rain barrel that my husband had set up. I do not recommend getting this rain barrel. We got this from uh, Tractor Supply and it easily gets already filled. Um, so I'm going to look for some 55 gallon food grade drums to use as my rain catch system. But anyways, uh, these two buckets right here were completely empty. And then that storm came through and uh, the rain barrel, it overflows and goes right down there and fills that up. So in just the half an hour or so that the rainstorm was here, it filled up both these buckets. That's a lot of rain. Alright, so we're going into the main garden. This is my new garden gate, the old ones over there. Uh, because we rebuilt the dog run, the old gate didn't work anymore, so my husband had to refabricate a new gate system. And we're still working on it because the closure, closure's not right. Uh, the chickens still can get in here if they try hard enough. Alright, so now we're in the main garden. This is the medicinal bed that we're looking at. I will post a link to the video up there that I just did of the medicinal uh, herb bed and everything that is in it. Something new is I finally got my two additional cattle panels that go right up against my rose garden, which is this area here. You can see we're starting to have some flowers. So that's kind of cool. And then we still have some more roses that are just starting to get established. This one right here. Um, I thought was completely dead and so I submitted the warranty information uh, the guarantee whatever to the place where I bought it saying hey this thing never came out of dormancy it's dead and basically it was completely dead there was no life in it whereas the one right there and then the one back there they have lots of growth on them this growth just peaked out of the ground just a few days ago so there's actually life in that thing and that's so amazing yes i do have a lot of weeding to do um weeds really when when water hits the ground it seems like weeds explode so i do have a lot of weeding to do but i'll get to that on another day but yeah these two panels right here are the newest panels that I've been trying to get put in here for a while. We just didn't have the funds. Funds were really tight at the moment. But they're finally in. So, and you can see that there's not much space between this one and that one. And uh, basically all this is for is to grow vertical crops. There's not going to be anything on the ground as far as uh, ground crops. But just vertical crops. This will have um, some dried variety pole beans growing on it. I'm so excited we finally got this in. And then I have th some things planted in here. I've got to get some more things planted in here. Um, it's just been too darn hot. Um, we've been almost in the 90s here in uh, May, early June. And for us in Michigan, that's really hot. Um, it usually does not get that hot until late July into August. Um, but it's been very, very hot, 
very extremely dry. We're actually in a drought right now. And so this rainstorm that just came through was a uh, godsend. We're so, so thankful. Um, it's not going to solve our drought, but it's a start. And see these containers here? These are nursery flats. And then this is just a standard bin. And these were completely empty before the rainstorm came through. So you see how much rain we got in just a little over a half an hour. And uh, so that's a lot of rain. And I'm going to leave the water in here because um, we're supposed to go through some more dry periods. So I'm going to need that water to water my garden. So it's going to stay there. And for those who are worried about mosquitoes and things uh, breeding in this, as fast as I go through water to try to keep my garden from dying, um, this will get taken care of before the mosquitoes start breeding in that. My hollyhocks are really doing good. They're starting to put up their flower stalk spikes. So that's really cool. I did not know that hollyhocks were a perennial. I thought they were an annual. So I was going to grow some more and replant. But then uh, I was like, oh, they're a perennial. Sometimes you don't do research as much as you thought you did. So, yeah. But anyway, so they're doing really good. I've got some old chai. Uh, this is old garlic here and here that apparently I did not dig up correctly. And right next to that is my asparagus that made it through the transplant. I moved asparagus over from another area where it wasn't doing so well and transplanted it in here. That way I know exactly where it is. I can add amendments to it as necessary for this specific plant and we can go from there. Next to it, this is wild plantain. This is the narrow leaf plantain. And out of the different varieties of wild plantain, this one is actually the best one to use for um, uh, medicinal purposes because it has the most of the compound that is in the plant that is really good for your health. My Chicago fig is starting to come back and it's actually spread out a little bit. This is the main root system here of a Chicago fig. And Chicago figs die back every year and then they send up new shoots. They do not grow on the same stalks as before, the same branches I should say. But I leave the branches there, that way I know where the footprint is for the fig. But as you can see, we have where the root extended and threw out another uh, plant there, which is kind of cool. We try to transplant a red currant tree and I don't think this took it's looking really bad right now actually this is not a red currant sorry this is a golden currant um, with the, the heat and everything um, it looks like we probably lost this tree um, but my husband said leave it here let it alone just keep watering it because there is still some green on it um, but just to leave it here and see what it does in the spring if uh, you know if it shoots out some new life or whatever if not I do have a place where I can get some shoots and try to root those shoots and try again to grow grow a tree like this because this is a perfect thing to have here for the birds and things and you know to try some currants so that's kind of cool the grapevines are doing pretty good so I don't know if I'll get any grapes this year um, I see them but so are the birds so we'll see if I actually get um, some grapes my doggies are loving walking in the garden because it's wet and they've got all sorts of stuff check to check out because the ground sound smells so different with it being wet my beans are starting to come up that I planted here in this cattle panel this these are blue lake beans. I've got them planted on both sides there. So we should get a lot of beans here. The wind and the rain was so hard it uh, toppled quite a few of the um, tender stemmed plants like this marshmallow. And you can see the the damage there to my elderberry as well 
And I'll go over to this one. All the elderberries, the leaves are just turned all sorts of different ways because of the wind and the rain. I haven't showed you guys the young ones in a while. But these are our young ones here. Most most of these birds are the young ones. I don't see any of the older ones yet. Um, but this is the flock that we hatched ourselves, except for the that one there. And there's six of those. Those are light. Excuse me. They're they're buff Brahmas. I have six of those. So we have. Um, the chickens are just starting to get into maturity as far as sexual maturity, we have noticed. Um, this one here, she's she's a young one, that one right there. But uh, our roosters ha uh, that are from our, what we hatched, and now the older roosters are starting to uh, have relations, let's say, with the young hens. So that's kind of interesting. We do have some hens here. Uh, the buff uh, or um, Brahmas look like it. If you watch her, she goes that way. We have a few hens like this that don't have any tail feathers. And it's not because they've been plucked out, but they actually never grew tail feathers. If you have any idea why that might be, leave a comment in the uh, comment section below. I don't know if you can see them from here, but uh, but we have the three older ducks, and then somewhere else is the younger hens running around, but they're doing pretty good as well. So that's our chicken and duck update. If I have time, I will show you some more before the end of this video, but I don't want to make this video too long. Our lavender made it through the winter. I wasn't sure if it was going to or not, but I guess I mulched it enough. Um, again, it looks kind of rough right now. Um, if I zoom in here, sorry, to zoom in. And see, it kind of looks dead, or half dead. And it's actually not, it's that the dead stuff is actually the uh, old growth from last year. So I finally get to cut that off because I know that my plants have survived the winter and all that new growth is wonderful. This bed I made into my raspberry patch this year because I was offered some raspberries from a place that was uh, getting completely torn down. And so we transplanted not only the currants that I showed you, but also some raspberries. And again, because of the time of year, it's not a good time to transplant those kind of things. But we tried, and we have some that are still trying to to hold on, but uh, we'll see if they survive or not. I am not sure. My garlic is doing amazing. You can see that bed over there, and this bed here, and that bed there. This is all garlic. It's hard neck varieties of garlic and I have some different ones in here I have music and I also have Degansky these are all from MI Gardener uh, and then I have some the ones that are over there are from a farmer a local farmer here in uh, Michigan we just bought some from him to plant because uh, there was a rush to get garlic and I didn't know if I was going to be able to get any so um, we got some um, from one of our uh, farm market vendors just in case but now like I said with the weather it's been so so dry and I haven't watered my garden until two days ago because we use the back to Eden heavy mulch gardening so most of the stuff I have not watered because the mulch retains moisture for a long time in the ground but we're getting to the point where we needed to water so my husband put my sprinkler up there let's see if I can zoom in here because it's, it's not gonna let me but I have my sprinkler up there and uh, we watered it two days ago uh, not knowing that we were gonna get any rain at all um, and I actually ran the sprinkler overnight <laughs> it's a long time to run the sprinkler but when you're in a drought 
um, and you have to water. It's it's good to just let it run overnight to saturate the ground, and then um, you know it's fine for the rest of the day for a while. But anyways, um, it took that for my garlic, and these are all hard neck varieties, to finally throw out some scapes. You can see I got quite a few scapes here. Beautiful scapes. So these are what hard neck varieties grow out, and they actually form a flower head if you let them go too long. Um, but you can eat these. But when you start seeing scapes on your hard neck gar garlic, you know you're getting close to the time where you can start to harvest them. So it's a two for one thing. You get to eat those beautiful things and it's also letting you know that it's almost time for you to harvest that garlic. So I'm very excited about that. So I'm taking you in here to my greenhouse where I grow my peppers. Um, these are hot peppers. I have uh, cayenne and I also have habanero. And I don't know which one is which um, because the farmer that I got them from, um, his tags had fallen out of those two flats. And so um, he's not sure which ones are which. Um, but I said, that's that's fine. You know, for what I'm using them for, I don't mind. So they're doing beautifully. This chamomile kind of just grew here. And I'm like, well, that's fine. Because of the f flowers of the chamomile, that will drop the pollinators in here. And there's actually one right there. Um, and so they'll be already coming in because of the chamomile. And so when the flowers start to uh, come for the peppers, we'll definitely have pollinators in here to pollinate them. I also have my sweet potato. This is a Hawaiian variety of purple sweet potato. And um, I finally got it planted in here because it's been warm enough at night where it's not going to harm it. But I'm growing this in my greenhouse as well because it needs the heat in order to produce the potatoes because it is a tropical plant. This here is exactly why there is a crate over my catnip. <laughs> Tiny is enjoying the catnip. And he's preferring to chew on this one, even though there's quite a bit of catnip right there that he doesn't have to fight with. But yeah, if you see uh, the different areas where I grow catnip, I have to have uh, some sort of protection for the main plant. Otherwise, my cats will kill it, and then I won't be able to use it, and they won't have any. So it's a classic case of you can't eat your cake and have it too. So I'm protecting the cake. So we're heading into my container bed area, but I figured I'd show you some things that I find interesting about chickens. Right here, where this chair is, we had uh, pots of my um, spinach, because spinach needs to be kind of kept in the shade in order for it not to bolt so fast. Well, my chickens free range, so with these not being in the protected area of my garden, the chickens took uh, a beating onto those uh, spinach and so I had to take my pots of spinach into the main garden and try to find an area where they could be in the shade. So my chickens hit the next pots that were available for green foliage, that being my carrots. So now I'm going to have to move my carrots into the main garden to protect them from the chickens eating them. So into the container area we're going. This is a huge container of chamomile and you can see it's been knocked over by the storm. And then I have three containers of onions here. Three containers of onions here. I have a bucket of safflower. Autumn, get over here. This is more carrots. We also have some beets and some lettuce. And you'll notice with the beets here and the lettuce, and then the lettuce over there and the kale and the mustards, that the chickens really haven't bothered these ones. 
and it's just very interesting because I've seen the chickens up here countless times um, doing things but they haven't touched these um, they've mostly been digging in the buckets that are on the ground um, yes I have quite a few mustards that have gone to seed um, but I do that so when I collect seed pods I make sure I get a good diverse genetic makeup and uh, you know if they self seed that's fine um, because you can't have too much mustard greens and then um, in this area if you have not uh, seen my videos before this is actually my mint garden that's what it was before we put some containers in here and this is where I have my various mint plants I have three of them in here I have the chocolate mint there and then this is peppermint here and then over there is spearmint the spearmint doesn't seem to be as invasive as the peppermint and the chocolate mint so eventually I'm going to have to pull some of these mints back and it's real easy to to do uh, to pull the runners up and uh, push it back a little bit but this is why I have these growing here you can see the pasture land is encroaching on my garden area um, because the pasture is made up of a lot of quack grass and quack grass just sends out runners to keep multiplying and so it's a never-ending battle to fight quack grass so one of the ways you can fight it is by lenting things like uh, mints uh, that also compete for ground space grow and it helps a little bit um, but as you can see the quack grass is really encroaching in on my garden again um, and I haven't been out here to cut it down because it's been too hot to work out here for my health conditions but it is what it is right so we just deal with it as we can and eventually I will have this all cut back and it'll look nice again eventually so that is my update for the garden here in June right after a uh, major rainstorm that we desperately need um, we still need more rain um, like I said this rain shower lasted maybe 45 minutes maybe an hour total um, but we've been in a drought for two three months at least during the growing season we haven't had much rain at all and so we need a lot more rain here in Michigan and I'm pretty sure other parts of the the US and the world in general there's some areas that need a lot of rain so I thank you so much for watching this video if you enjoy it make sure you give it a thumbs up if you haven't already become a part of the journey I ask you to click the subscribe button below so you can stay updated with all the different things we do on the homestead whether it's gardening food preservation different things I'm doing for my health it's all right here on the journey so make sure you subscribe and until next time everybody I hope that wherever you are you are wonderfully blessed bye bye